Good afternoon, New York, and the rest of our listeners around the globe. My name is June Stoyer, and I'm the host of the Organic View Radio Show. Our podcast is available on iTunes, Zoom, and you can also visit our website at www.theorganicview.com. If you have any questions for our guests, there are many ways you can contact the show. You can post a question on our wall on Facebook, Skype us, send us a tweet on Twitter to at The Organic View, or you can contact me directly at June Stoyer. If you'd like to be on the show or would like to find out about sponsorship opportunities, please contact us at questions at theorganicview.com. Today's show is brought to you by liquidweb.com, the most reliable hosting provider with 24-7 heroic support. Listeners of today's show will receive $100 credit towards Storm servers, which includes virtual private servers and dedicated hosting. Or you can try Liquid Web's shared hosting for free for one month by using the coupon code ORGVIEW. That's O-R-G-V-I-E-W. Please visit liquidweb.com and make sure that you tell them that you found out about them on the show. On today's show, my guest is Bill Fries from the Center for Food Safety, who has some startling information about the rapidly declining monarch butterfly population here in America. So I'd like to welcome to the show, Mr. Bill Fries. Good afternoon, Bill, and thank you for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me, June. Bill, before we begin, can you take a moment to share a little bit about yourself with our listeners, as well as how you became interested in working with butterflies? Well, I think my first experience with butterflies was when I was a child. I still remember, I have a very distinct memory of raising a monarch caterpillar at home and watching it form its chrysalis. And I remember just as I was about to leave for school one day, I saw the monarch begin to emerge from its chrysalis. And I waited. I decided I would be late for school. I had to watch this. It was just remarkable. And, you know, I think a lot of children have had that experience of really being introduced to this incredible process of metamorphosis through the monarch butterfly. It's really just a precious resource. I've been working now on genetically engineered crop issues since 1999, and I was first with Friends of the Earth, and now uh, since 2006 I've been with Center for Food Safety, and I'm really very concerned with protecting our environment and, and human health and trying to support more sustainable agriculture, such as organic. Bill, a lot of people are talking about the disappearance of the monarch butterfly here in the United States. I know locally I haven't seen many at all this entire growing season, and it's been something that's on the radar. Could you share with our listeners exactly what the statistics are and what's responsible for this decline? Well, you know, scientists have been tracking monarch populations now very precisely for about 20 years. And what they do is they measure the area of forests that monarchs occupy in Mexico where they go to overwinter. And as a lot of your listeners probably know, monarchs undergo this amazing migration, right? In the summer, they're throughout the country and especially in the Midwest. And they, in the late summer and fall, they migrate 1,000, 2,000 miles down to the mountains of Mexico where they spend the winter, where it's warmer. And scientists have measured their populations in Mexico, and they found that monarchs have declined by 90% over just the past two decades. That's an extremely steep decline, and it really is worrying to monarch scientists and a lot of other people who are learning about this. Bill, could you take a moment to explain to our listeners what exactly a GMO is and why they're a problem for the monarch population? Often I find that most people don't understand what GMOs are or they have the wrong information. Yeah, uh, GMO refers to genetically modified organism, and we often uh, also refer to genetically engineered crops. They're synonyms. Um, What genetic engineering is, it's a powerful new technology that allows scientists to take genes from just about any organism and insert them into crops. And the idea is to give the crop new properties. Now, by far the major type of genetically engineered crop um, is called Roundup Ready. And these are especially corn and soybean varieties that have been genetically engineered to withstand direct spraying of Roundup herbicide. Okay? Now, Roundup is a very potent weed killer. The 
chemical name for Roundup is glyphosate. And uh, if you spray a conventional corn or soybean plant with glyphosate, you'll kill it. With Roundup Ready, uh, you can spray the very high rates of this Roundup herbicide uh, through much of the growing season directly on the crop to kill weeds. Now, what this has led to is an enormous increase in the use of Roundup in U.S. agriculture. Today, um, of, there are over 200 million pounds of glyphosate being applied to corn and soybeans in the United States. This is a huge, huge amount of herbicide. And it turns out that Roundup is uniquely effective at killing milkweed. Milkweed is a very tough plant uh, that most herbicides don't kill, but Roundup is very good at killing it. And so with the rise of these genetically engineered Roundup Ready crops, there's been an enormous increase in Roundup use and a virtual elimination of milkweed plants from corn and soybean fields. Now, milkweed in corn and soybean fields was once the major source of milkweed plants from monarch butterfly caterpillars. And so that has meant that monarch populations have plummeted because they lack the milkweed that they need to survive. What exactly do you feel is the cause for the decline? Well, you know, there are a number of factors that are involved in the monarch declines. And uh, one issue has been the, the, the cutting down of some of the forests in Mexico where the monarchs overwinter. They overwinter in trees in the mountains of Mexico. And so that's one problem. There's been uh, logging in uh, Mexican forests. But it turns out the Mexican government in the past several years has gotten this problem largely under control. The other major factor is the decline, dramatic decline, of milkweed plants in the United States. Now, milkweeds are extremely important. They're these plants that monarchs absolutely depend on. And the reason is that monarch caterpillars can only feed on plants in the milkweed family. All right? They absolutely depend on milkweeds. And it turns out that there's been a, an enormous increase in the use of this herbicide, this weed killer called Roundup. And I think a lot of your listeners are probably familiar. Roundup is Monsanto's premier herbicide. It's a very powerful weed killer. And there's been a huge increase in the use of Roundup since the mid-1990s. And this is due to the introduction of crops, corn and soybeans in particular, that are resistant to Roundup. And that has allowed farmers to spray a lot more of this very potent herbicide than they ever had before. And what's happened is Roundup is very, very effective at killing milkweed plants and has almost eliminated milkweed plants in corn and soybean fields in the Midwest. What this does is it deprives the monarch caterpillars of the food they need to survive and to grow. And without the milkweed, monarchs can't survive. So we really need to have strong action to restore milkweed species so that monarchs have the plants that they require to survive. Thank you. Now, how does climate change relate to all of this? Well, you know, the monarch populations have just plummeted over the past 20 years. As I said, the populations have gone down by 90%. So whereas we once had, you know, just as recently as the 1990s, we had as, uh, as many as a billion butterflies in North America. And now we're down to just about 30, 30 to 35 million. This is the lowest recorded levels of monarch butterflies ever. Now, while that might sound like a lot of butterflies, it's really not very much at all. With climate change, what it does is it leads to more frequent storms and drought. Extreme weather events become more frequent with climate change. And in the overwintering range in Mexico, there have been severe storm events that have wiped out huge numbers of monarch butterflies. All right? They're all gathered together in just really just a few acres of forest in Mexico. So an extreme storm event can have devastating consequences. And with climate change, more frequent storms, and the very small populations, 
that spells a real serious risk of extinction. And that's why we've filed the petition with the Fish and Wildlife Service to have the monarch butterfly listed as a threatened species. If the monarch is listed as a threatened species, what does this mean for educators, for scientists, for people who actually study the monarch butterfly as well as the caterpillars and the eggs? Well, what it means is that the Fish and Wildlife Service would come up with a, a, an overall plan to restore monarchs, right, to make sure that they don't go extinct. And part of that will involve conserving milkweed plans to conserve milkweed and restore milkweed because it's so vital for monarchs. And contrary to what a lot of people think, citizens and teachers and school children could still use monarch caterpillars and still raise them for educational purposes. So having the monarch butterfly listed as a threatened species would not stop these wonderful programs that are going around, going on across the country to educate children about monarchs and to learn more about them and to, you know, conserve them. Bill, what can our listeners do to help support your efforts as well as to help protect our monarchs? Well, yeah, we we have on our website, we have resources. People can go to our website. That's www.centerforfoodsafety.org. And you'll find there we can you can sign on to petitions to support the listing process that we're pushing for, for with the Fish and Wildlife Service. And, you know, people can also do things on their own, like they can plant milkweed species. There are a lot of efforts across the country to plant pollinator gardens, including milkweed, to help monarchs survive. The other thing is to, you know, a lot of the uh, crops that are being grown, as, as we've said, are Roundup Ready. They're genetically engineered crops that are heavily treated with this herbicide Roundup or glyphosate, which is very damaging to milkweed species. And so people can, if they choose organic foods, these are foods that aren't sprayed with these pesticides. And so that can be another way to, to help support monarchs. Bill, thank you so much for being on the show today. Do you have any other projects that you'd like to share with our listeners? Well, yeah, the Center for Food Safety is working on a lot of different projects related to food and agriculture, and we're trying to support organic agriculture and also oppose, you know, harmful uh, agricultural technologies like the Roundup Ready crops. And also there's a whole host of new crops that the biotechnology companies are developing that are resistant not only to Roundup but to other herbicides as well. And this will lead to a big increase in the use of a lot of toxic chemicals that we really need to stop. So, so that's a, another project that we're working on. And, yeah, I would encourage people to visit our website to learn more about what we're doing. And we're at www.centerforfoodsafety.org. Thank you, Bill. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. And when you have the research for that, I would love to have you come back. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, thanks, June. It's been a pleasure. Oh, you're very welcome. And folks, to learn more about Bill Fries's work, as well as the Center for Food Safety, please visit the companion article, which will be available at www.theorganicview.com. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Have a great afternoon.